Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with letslearnthistogether.com and what I want to talk about today is macros and a really cool way of using them to save a tremendous amount of typing and time and hassle that I have discovered and I want to share with you. So a macro, if you're not familiar with, I can just type it right up here. You use a pound symbol or a hashtag, type macro, and then you can type any name, it's just like a constant or a variable name. So you can put anything in there. And then the really cool thing is you can put anything immediately after it. So you can have a number, you can have a string, or you could even have a function inside of here. So I guess I see one down there. You could have this macro called hello, always activate this function. So immediately right there, you can see that macros are very versatile and can start saving you a lot of time right there. That's really, really cool. But the thing that is really neat and the thing to know about macros is that they can't be changed once the game begins. They are constant, meaning that they can't be changed. So once you type them once, the value that you give them, that's what they are forever. And by itself, that they seem pretty useful. Like there's a lot you can do with them. You can use them. Uh, they're great. But the cool thing that I've discovered is that macros are more of pointers than specific containers for data. And what I mean by that is look at this down here. This right here is actually a macro, but you can see that I'm coming inside of it and I am setting properties. And there's also lots of times when I'm actually getting properties and data from them. But how is that possible if it's a macro? Well, if we press F1, we can go directly to where the macro is created. And you can see right here that the macro is actually pointing to a global variable. And this global variable is an array which means that if you create an array of any kind, probably you want it to be global since macros are global in scope and can be used anywhere, you can then access that array with a much, much shorter length of text and you can access it just like it normally is. So I create this array called global.playerparty and I set a macro called pparty equal to that. And now this is actually just pointing over to this array and I can use it exactly like you would any array anywhere else. And you can move things around in that array. You can alter stuff. You can change data. It's fine. You're not doing anything to the macro. The macro itself is simply pointing right here. So this project is actually part of my advanced course that I just wrapped up and I am using these macros all over the place. They save so much time and so much energy because it's important to have descriptive names. I think that is very valuable, but you can shorten that down, especially with global variables because you have to type in that global beforehand to a macro that is much, much simpler and much shorter to type. So that's what I wanted to point out macros are kind of a hidden superpower and shortcut once you learn how to utilize them effectively. So I encourage you to go in and throw some macros in your project, play around with them and see how much time you can save. But that's what I've got for you today. If you want to learn more about my advanced course, check out my website at letslearnthistogether.com or check out the description below. And as always, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you soon.